Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stands. We're live outside Old Trafford this morning and we've got the morning news with a new Premier League season. I want to talk about Frankie de Jong. There's some interesting comments coming out from Laurie Whitwell, from The Athletic and a few other outlets, including The Mail. I also want to talk about Sesco. But there is a story that I want to talk about and being as I'm stood here, I will talk about it. And it's about Hakim Ziyech of Chelsea. Late last night, there was some reports coming out that Ziyech could be a solution for Manchester. United and you know what I think it's a bit like when you draw at Everton and you think that's disappointing I'd like to win and then after a couple of days you think that's actually not a bad point and I think what I'm talking about there is that with Ziyech I don't want Ziyech that is my initial reaction I want Anthony and so does Ten Hag but if you're not gonna get Anthony Ziyech is a player that I actually quite like. Now, I know he's touching 30 and I know he's not necessarily done fantastically well at Chelsea, but he is a player that's played with Ten Hag before. And I think as much as I don't want to be in this situation, we are going to start approaching a scenario where this transfer window is going to close down very, very soon. And we're going to end up with no Anthony and just using a Langa and maybe a Chong. So maybe there is something in that Ziyech deal that is cheap, reasonable and... He is a player that maybe comes in on a short-term scenario. Because I do, I don't like it, but I think realistically the season is starting and we're not prepared. And it's a bit like biting your nose off to spite your face. Do you just go, I want Anthony, I want Anthony, and when we don't get Anthony, we have a big old moan about the Glazers behind me and we have a protest? Or do we go, I want Anthony, I want Anthony, let's have a moan, but let's get Ziek as well, just so that we've actually got somebody. So keep your eye on Ziek. It is another former Ajax player. It is a bit windy. It is another former Ajax player, but I suppose we're into that place now where is it better than nothing? And, you know, last night I was quite annoyed by it. I was like, why are we going for Ziyech? He's a, he plays for Chelsea. They don't want him anymore. This is meant to be a rebuild. I'm looking at people like Chelsea, Arsenal, Spurs buying well. What does buying a player, when does buying a player that nobody else really wants work out? But, Having slept on it, I think, you know, we're in that situation where it might be better than nothing. So give us your thoughts on Ziek as we move on to the more topical stuff this morning from more reliable people as I go to United Stands MUFC on Twitter and let's have a look at what's coming out this morning because there's quite a range of things. Um, first of all, I just want to say about um, Sesco. Laurie Whitwell on The Athletic, always quite well informed on the Manchester United situation. He says more talks are planned over Sesco, but United face competition from Chelsea and possibly Liverpool. So um, it's interesting about Sesco. I've said it time and time again. I don't really believe that Sesco is a player that solves many problems this summer. I almost feel he's a player that you're buying your loan back to Salzburg. But with the competition that's out there, I think a lot of people have got this idea as well. I think there's some people in our fan base that think we're going to buy a 19-year-old Slovenian from the Austrian league who's going to come into this team and replace Ronaldo and Martial and score 30 goals like Haaland or uh, maybe a Darwin Nunez. I think that's completely unrealistic and I think that we've got to be realistic at Manchester United this season. I think Sesco does provide Manchester United with a future of what we should be looking to build, but I don't think it's by far... A straightforward deal and I also suspect that there is competition out there and I think if we want to win this competition we're going to have to spend big which Manchester United have done in the past we might offer him silly wages we might offer Salzburg big money but I would question why we would spend 40 50 million pounds on Sesco when we won't spend 80 million pounds on Anthony who's a priority so watch this space I mean I'm not going to focus on this but Laurie also says Ronaldo's exit appears increasingly unlikely to me that's good news um Laurie Whitwell is somebody who gets good information from the club and we are hearing more and more about Ronaldo likely to be staying at United. I'll believe it when I see it, but I think he's a good player and it makes us better. Um, sources regarding Cristiano's full participation in United's Premier League media day at Carrington on Tuesday as notable and the pool of potential buyers has shrunk. That's an interesting point. I tweeted that out a couple of nights ago. There was a picture of Ronaldo, Ronaldo behind a green screen um, and that was done on Tuesday, which means this is after the storm in the teacup about players leaving. 
and it was Ronaldo smiling and involved with United. So look, I don't think there's an unwillingness from Ronaldo. I think he would like to move, but if he doesn't get the move, he will be professional. Hopefully our fans will be professional as well and we can get on with the season. Um, wages, okay, let's have a look at this. So Laurie Whitwell also talking about the situation with Frankie de Jong. Uh, Manchester, senior Manchester United sources continue to reject claims that De Jong is not interested in moving to Old Trafford. They view the primary obstacle as financial rather than emotional. Wages owed to the player and payments due to his agents much rests on that judgment being correct. Well, I've said this many times before. I think in relation to Frankie De Jong, that's quite reassuring to come out from Laurie Whitwell or Samuel Luckhurst or James Ducker or anybody else that does and has have a consistent path of getting decent information from decent sources within the club. And if those sources are saying this morning, as per that article, that they still retain confidence that we're going to get Frankie de Jong, that he does have a desire to come to Manchester United and that this is about owed wages, then that to me is why I and some of you retain confidence that we will sign Frankie de Jong. There has to be something behind three months of focusing on one player. And I don't want to go over old ground, but we are at Old Trafford here. This is a player that we've spent three months trying to buy, that we've been ridiculed by, that our director of football and our CEO have gone to Barcelona for, that we've now got Chelsea who want to buy. I believe, and I agree with what's been said in that article, that Manchester United are confident and have an agreement privately with Frankie de Jong. Now, the proof will be in the pudding as to whether he signs for Manchester United or not. But at this time, I believe there's a reason to be confident. Um, there is also a story coming out from the Mail this morning talking about Chelsea. I think it's Chris Wheeler. Chelsea's confidence that the Champions League and the money that they can offer make them confident that they can get Frankie de Jong. They also go on to talk about Ruben Neves and other alternatives. I don't really see what these alternatives are. Ruben Neves, as I've said time and time again, is an expensive alternative. Tillemans would rather go to Arsenal. We had Melissa Reddy the other day saying that, you know, someone like Renato Sanchez could be on the radar. He's literally gone to PSG yesterday. So I believe that it is Frankie de Jong or nothing for Manchester United. And I do believe that that is a signing that United are still very much hoping will happen and believe it will happen. Now, interestingly, in the mail, they also talk about how Manchester United and Chelsea would be willing to pay the 17 million deferred wages that has held this deal up in the first place. I'd find that illogically strange. Um, it also goes on to say that Chelsea could have an advantage because they want... Um, Barcelona wants Aspilicueta and Alonso. There's actually another story this morning that Chelsea want Aubameyang. I don't like... The, these, um, the relationship but the deals that are potentially happening between Chelsea and Barcelona because if you're talking to Chelsea about Aubameyang you can also talk to Chelsea about De Jong and if you're talking to Chelsea about taking Aspilicueta, you can also talk to Chelsea about De Jong. So I'd be more concerned about the relationship and conversations that are going on between Barcelona and Chelsea. However, I also feel that it would be strange of Manchester United to agree a deal with Barcelona a month ago and then just because Chelsea get involved say yes we'll pay the 17 million which has held this deal up. Let's not forget Frankie de Jong is not a Manchester United player because he wants the money he's owed by Barcelona. Manchester United agreed a fee with Barcelona over a month ago and have basically sat back saying well we're going to wait and see what happens with the money that's owed. So it would be odd if United suddenly got scared because of Chelsea and went, we'll pay that 17 million because if we miss out on Frankie de Jong and we were willing to pay the 17 million, the question has to be asked, and you know what I'm going to say, why didn't we just pay that 17 million a month ago? Because we didn't want to pay the 17 million. We didn't think we'd have to pay the 17 million. We played the long game and then Chelsea swoop in and do a deal. So for me, I agree with what Laurie Whitwell's put there. I think a lot of people agree with this on de Jong. This is definitely a situation whereby it's about the money that Barcelona don't want to pay. The fee, 70 million, 85 million euros, whatever you want to call it, that's agreed. This is about Frankie de Jong and the money that he's owed. Now, United have never been willing to pay that and Frankie de Jong has never been willing to leave until he gets that. If we're now willing to pay that and Chelsea are willing to pay that and it's a shootout between us and Chelsea and Chelsea did win, you know what I'm saying? I've said it already. Why didn't we just pay that in the first place? It would be a little bit odd in my, in my faith. So, look, Frankie de Jong is where he's at. Sesco's at where he's at. Um, we've spoken about Ziyech. 
Outgoings, Eric Bailly, of course. We've heard about Eric Bailly before. I think he is a player that will probably be moving. Brandon Williams as well. Aaron Wan-Bissaka. These are the three players that Manchester United hope will bring some money in. Tellez went yesterday. Apparently his wages are being covered. That's one positive, but he's still going to come back in a year's time. We do need to get some players out, and I don't think we've got enough players out, to be honest with you. But where we're at at the moment, we've got a game on, Tuesday, on, on Sunday against Brighton. We've got a preview coming up tonight for that. We've got Adam and Ricky outside Old Trafford giving you their pre-season thoughts. But on transfers, on a Thursday, I've got to say, I'm not going to talk for too long because I don't really have a lot more to say. Ziek is interesting. I want to see what you've got to say in the comments. That's the story this morning for me. Um, I think James Ducker said last night that with regards to Anthony, Man United have backed away because of the price. We know that Anthony is a player that Ten Hag wants. We know that Anthony is a player that wants to come to Manchester United. And unfortunately, we know that Manchester United do not want to pay what Ajax want. Now, maybe this is all part of the game. I'd still say 50-50 on Anthony. But if we're not going to do that deal, you've got to ask yourself a question. Do you want Ziyech on a short-term deal for a year and then maybe you go back for Anthony? Or do you just go and find an alternative to Anthony? And these alternatives, I've got to just say, these alternatives to De Jong and Anthony, it's not like you're not going to pay 75 million for Anthony and then go and get a player who's as good for 30. If you want, if you wanted Saar from Watford, you're still going to probably have to play 40. So maybe, maybe Ziyech, I don't, I don't like it, but maybe Ziyech comes in and, and, and is an alternative. Um, Frankie De Jong alternatives, as I've said, Ruben Neves is going to cost you just about as much. I don't really think there is a lot of alternatives. I really do think that and I've said it time and time again, if we don't get Frankie de Jong, the summer is a complete and utter failure. If we don't get Frankie de Jong, I think the season is in jeopardy already. And if we don't get Frankie de Jong, it massively undermines the new manager before a ball has been kicked. We have to get Frankie de Jong. It's not breaking news. But it's about this man this weekend at this ground. Old Trafford, Sunday, Brighton, three points. Whatever's going to happen in the transfer window, whoever's going to sign, we need a good start. That's what we need. Uh, anyway, get your comments in below. I really want to know what you think about Ziyech. It's nice not to be talking about a certain number seven. It's nice to be moving the ball forward towards this place on Sunday. And it's nice to be talking about alternatives. It looks like it's going to rain. It literally is sunny with a big grey crowd. Uh, it's Manchester. Thanks everyone for watching. Smash a like on the video, subscribe. Check out the video this afternoon. And of course, if anything happens, we'll go live as well. I'm going to get in from the rain. Thank you everyone for watching.